Welcome back everyone to lecture 47 or lecture one, whether you're a Calc 1 student or Calc 2 student at Southern Utah University. I wanted to talk about more about the fundamental theorem of calculus and how we can use it to calculate areas under a curve. Uh, so imagine we have this function f of x equals x squared minus 4, and we want to calculate the area from 0 to 2. You can see the illustration displayed on the slide right here. And although this illustration is not necessary to calculate the area of the region, it can be very helpful to draw the picture so that we have a clear idea of what we're looking for. Because especially in this context, when they ask you to find the area of a region, one thing to remember is that area is always considered a positive quantity. Um, but yet, this region you see right here falls below the x-axis, and so the it'll actually be considered a negative area when we calculate we'll get a negative area when we calculate with the definite integral. The definite integral is going to give us the net area. Area above the x-axis is considered positive, but area below the x-axis will be considered negative. For many applications, this is a very preferable method, like in science and chemistry and engineering and the like. But if we're trying to find geometric area, we do want to make this be positive. And so we're going to have to make sure we take absolute values of our final result here. So in the meanwhile, though, we know that the area is going to equal the integral uh, from 0 to 2. These are the bounds that we were given of our function x squared minus 4 dx. And again, we're going to have to take some absolute values of this because we're anticipating a negative area. But the area is going to equal this integral right here. And so using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can calculate this area by finding an antiderivative x squared minus 4, which will look like x cubed over 3 minus 4x uh, as we range from 0 to 2. Uh, plugging in that 0 and 2, uh, we're going to get the following. Uh, we will get 2 cubed over 3 minus 4 times, uh, 4 times 2, excuse me. That's the first part when we plug in the 2. When we plug in the 0, uh, we're going to end up with 0 cubed over 3 minus 4 times 0. And you're going to notice this a lot, that when we plug in 0, we often will just make the whole thing disappear. So we're going to love it when we integrate at the bound 0. That's sort of our favorite number to go from. Um, now, continue on with the arithmetic. We'll get 2 cubed, which is 8. 8 over 3. 4 times 2 is also an 8. Um, if you factor out the 8, you're left with 1 third minus 1, which... The one, you might prefer to write it as 3 over 3. And so taking that difference, uh, you end up with a 8 times negative 2 thirds. That is to say, we get negative 16 over 3. And remember that we said that we were taking absolute values the whole time. I wasn't writing the absolute value notice the whole time. And that's and that, that you can kind of get away without doing that. The idea here is if you're calculating these areas and you end up with something negative at the end, just make sure to take the absolute value. And so that we get in the end that the area under the curve is a positive 16 thirds uh, squared units of area. Uh, looking at another example, this take this time let's find the area under the our area under the curve that is we want to find the area between the x-axis and the function given x squared minus 3x this is what we mean by under the curve uh, when you take the area between a function and the x-axis this is kind of a weird way of saying it because when you look at the graph uh, the curve actually is below the x-axis, so it looks like the area is above. And that's actually why we're getting a negative area here again. Make sure to take absolute values when we're done. So to find this area, we're going to integrate from 1 to 3 our function x squared minus 3x dx. And again, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can use an antiderivative to help us out here. Antiderivative of x cubed minus 3x would look like x cubed. What Did I say x cubed earlier? Ooh, maybe I'm putting the... Uh, horse or the carbon from the horse there we want to take the antiderivative of x squared minus 3x so we're going to get x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 divided by 1 and 3 uh, ratio phobics maybe pause and fast forward to the next part of this video because there will be a lot of fractions coming forward here um, we're going to get 3 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 3 squared over 2 when we plug in the 3 and then we subtract from that we're going to get 1 cubed over 3 minus 3 times 1 squared over 2. In which case, we're going to end up with a 27 over 3 minus 27 over 2. One thing to watch out for when you do these definite integrals is that everything in the second 
in the second part of the, fra of the function, when you plug in the one, it's going to be subtracted. One third minus three halves. Like so, make sure you subtract all of these. Now, we could simplify 27 over 3, but since we already have a 1 third right here, I'm just going to leave it as it is, and we're going to combine these uh, these common denominators right there. So you're going to end up with 27 thirds minus a third, which is 26 thirds. And then you're going to have a negative 27 plus uh, a negative 27 halves plus 3 halves. And so that's going to give us a negative 24 halves right there. All right? And so we can... Uh, simplify the 24 halves there. Uh, that, of course, would just become negative 12 right there. Um, but we do have to add these together. So finding common denominator, we'll get 3, so we can make this 36 over 3. And so finishing up this calculation, uh, we end up with a negative 10 over 3. That, of course, gives us the integral. We're trying to find the area. So if we want to find the area here, the area is going to equal the absolute value of all that. So we end up with 10 thirds right there. Always make your area be a positive quantity. If they ask you just to calculate the integral, then leave the integral negative if it turns out to be negative. But they ask you to find the area of the region. Do take it to be a positive. Take absolute values of that. And so let's look at one more example of this. This time, let's use a trigonometric function, cosine. Uh, find the area under the cosine curve from 0 to b, right? Well, what if we leave b as uh, some unknown, right? If you wanted to do that, we're looking for the integral from 0 to b of cosine of x dx. In this situation, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we're going to look for an antiderivative. This we have to be very careful about. While the derivative of cosine is negative sign, the antiderivative of cosine is a positive sign because the derivative of sine is cosine. Be very careful about the signs right there. Uh, we're going to get 0 to b. And so when you plug that in there, you're going to get sine of b minus sine of 0, right? And then, well, sine of 0 is just 0. Uh, so that actually is just going to disappear. And so the area under the, oh, under the cosine function is just going to be cosine of that number b. So if we wanted to do the specific value, like, like you see in the illustration here, if we wanted to go from 0 uh, to pi halves right here, cosine of x dx, by our calculation, we see that this is going to be, oh, whoa, shoot, when did I switch to cosine right there? Uh, that should be sine of b, sorry. The area under the sine function, uh, under the cosine function from zero to any value is just going to be sine of that value. And so this would give us sine of pi halves if we want to go all the way up to pi halves, uh, which is going to equal one. So this region you see highlighted right here, it has an area just one. So you've seen like the unit square before, which is just one square unit. Uh, that's what this is going on right here. This, this uh, region underneath the cosine right here is just one square unit of area. It's kind of interesting there. And so this time the area was naturally positive, so we didn't have to really worry about absolute value. But when you work with area, make sure you're always taking absolute values of everything to make sure you always end up with a positive value. See you next time, everyone.